Now, let's take a look at the muscles of the arm. The arm, you'll recall, is the segment of the upper limb that lies between the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. The muscles of the arm are arranged in two compartments or two groups, an anterior compartment or a flexor compartment and a posterior or extensor compartment. So let's start with the anterior compartment. The anterior compartment lies in front of the humerus, the bone of the arm, and indeed in front of the medial and lateral intermuscular septa. The muscles in the anterior compartment are the biceps brachii, that's the most anterior of the muscles in the compartment, and then you will see biceps brachii, if you trace it proximally, it is made up of two heads. And I'm going to reveal the two heads by turning this muscle away. And this muscle, of course, is pectoralis major. And I've turned that away, and now you can see biceps being made up of two heads. That is called the long head of biceps, and the other one is the short head of biceps. And you can see the two heads meeting each other and joining up to form a single belly about halfway down the arm. The short head of biceps actually arises in common from the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula with another muscle. And I'm going to show that muscle to you. And that is this muscle here called coracobrachialis. So the anterior compartment of the arm is made up of the biceps brachii, a double-headed muscle, if you like, and coracobrachialis, and one more member. Let's work down the arm, and you'll see that behind the biceps brachii is yet another muscle, this one here, which is called brachialis. So these are the three muscles which make up the anterior compartment of the arm. And if you need any help remembering the names, Perhaps you might think of B, B, C, biceps, brachialis, coracobrachialis. Generally, the muscles of any given compartment in any segment of any limb are supplied by the same motor nerve, the nerve of that compartment. And the nerve of the anterior compartment of the arm is the musculocutaneous nerve a terminal branch of the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. And let's see the musculocutaneous nerve as it enters this compartment. And the musculocutaneous nerve characteristically goes through the coracobrachialis muscle, and you can see that doing this here. And then having gone through coracobrachialis and supplied the muscle, it supplies the remainder of the muscles in the compartment. We've seen the nerve supply of the muscles in the anterior compartment, but what about the functions of the muscles which make up the anterior compartment? So let's take them in turn. Coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis is a rather slender muscle, and I suppose it's a weak adductor, but functionally it's not particularly important. But it's a weak adductor for what it's worth. Now, the other muscles are, of course, very powerful, brachialis and biceps brachii. So what about brachialis? Brachialis crosses in front of the elbow joint and attaches to the front of the proximal ulna. And when the brachialis contracts, it flexes the elbow joint powerfully, as you might imagine. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the innovation of brachialis, the nerve supply. It's curious. We've seen the musculocutaneous nerve, but a small part of the brachialis, the lateral third or so of the brachialis, curiously has a different nerve supply. It's supplied by, would you believe it, the radial nerve. And it's one of two or three muscles in the body that have a rather curious dual innervation, as they call it. So that's your brachialis. And then the biceps brachii, powerful tendon, it crosses in front of the elbow joint and then attaches to the proximal end of the radius along the back of the radial tuberosity. Like the brachialis, because it crosses in front of the axis of the elbow joint, it too is a powerful flexor of the elbow joint. But it can do something else. By virtue of its attachment to the back of the radial tuberosity, biceps brachii is also a powerful 
supernature of the forearm. In fact, I would go so far as to call it the supernature of the forearm. In fact, the direction of the threads on a screw reflect this fact. Because you supinate your forearm when you force a screw into the wall. You need the more powerful movement, supination, and you use pronation to remove the screw from the wall, a much weaker movement.